Hello and welcome to So Farscape. A fun-filled Farscape fan cast by a fervent fan. And a frankly fascinated first-timer. I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. And, and this, this is, is the story, story So Farscape. Farscape. Oh, it's such a Farscape story this week again. It is. It's so Farscape out there. <laughs> it's a uh, little bit. It's Farscape fetching. It's Farsc... No, I'm kind of running out of Farscape. Listen, if there were that many here. F words, we'd be cycling through them a lot more. Like Fair point. Do you remember how... So far, fair point? No. <laughs> We thought, oh, we'll just do a different F pun every yeah. week. Yeah, no. Not happening. No, no, none of that. <laughs> so this week's episode is episode 309, Losing Time. Yes. Oh, it's uh, it's it's known as a green shirt episode. Do you understand uh, why? Oh, because everybody stays alive? What? Well, red shirts die, so green <laughs> shirts stay alive. <laughs> no. uh, because it's the John who has the green shirt that this episode is about. Oh, do you remember how I, she how she sent them a, 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 a gave them, you wear that you wear that excuse me why me you might have inadvertently given away a bit of information here but what why oh that like you know this is a green shirt episode which means that there's going to be more of them that we're not going to have any recurring any oh my god of yes I did didn't so I? far yes <laughs> <laughs> well okay maybe we should talk about that. You've predicted that they that the Johns would be rejoined or the crews would be rejoined right. fairly quickly, and that yeah. has not proved to be well, the this case is like so we far. Have, we've had one episode on each of the ships, so you know that's I would still count that as being fairly quickly. You know, the, 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 given the right, oh, a, little, okay. a little bit of time to play with it. You know, like. I mean, it is about four times as long as the half an episode as you initially predicted. So fair far. point. Yeah, but, you know. But so you were still expecting, you were still expecting a quick breath. Do you want to, hey, it's an unconventional <laughs> double, move. Double or nothing? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, ooh. <laughs> How many episodes now? <laughs> oh, that's going to be, okay. All right, I'll take a double or nothing on at least another two episodes. At least another time. Oh, I've got to need you to. Uh, well, no, uh, hold on. Like, this is, this is uh, uh, what's it called? Roulette rules. You've got to pick a, you've got to pick a number. An oh. episode number. So this was episode number nine. There's 22 in the season. Okay, okay. Let me I'm let me rephrase that. So yeah, like, there, I, th- I think there's going to be at least one more episode with only uh, on one ship. All right. So that's going to be so that's going to be 10, 11. So no earlier than 12. Yeah. Um, oof. Now, and then it's like, okay, episode 13. <laughs> episode 13. All yeah. right. Mark it in the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But here we are on uh, uh, Season 3, Episode 9. Oh, yep, yeah, uh, music. Ah, oh, yeah, we don't have sound effects this week. No, okay, we we've got, I've got to yeah, edit them back in again. Okay, then, well, that'll be do, fine. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> yes, like we've always done. <laughs> hey, okay, so this episode, I mean, I did not have a lot of memories of it. We're yeah. getting deep into Season 3 where sort of my memory of a lot of these episodes fades the overall plot i really remember mm-hmm. and like the sort of character development but the plot of individual episodes is it's really fascinating to get back to because in this episode <clears throat> according to jenna while the peacekeepers have pilot soup yeah. aboard <laughs> that's lowercase p aboard moya it's our crew who are being tasted yeah strap in for bold acting choices inexplicable blood loss and funky smells thank you jenna and when John randomly starts bleeding after passing through a totally harmless space anomaly, anomaly the dysfunctional half-crew needs to whip into shape and enact complex plans together. Will's, ooh, uh, will starting at John and urinating together be enough to deal with an extra-dimensional or- orgasmatron? Oof. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Thank you for that one, Hersbert. Hersbert, that was really good. In my notes, I have the orgasmatron written down as well. No, I get that, yes. <laughs> Do you know where that's from? Well, it's from Orgasmo. Uh, the- no, that's the Orgasmo Ray you're thinking of. The Orgasmotron is a booth-like device from a Woody Allen film where he oh. wakes up in the future and it's okay. a super sexually liberated future. Right. I thought that was the the, the or- yeah yeah. I thought that was Orgasmo Ray. It was also the, called the Orgasmotron, oh, like for, from it? the from the uh, Matt P- Parker and Trey Stone. Masterpiece. Other? Yes. Yes. Uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. That's the one. Orgasmo. Yes. Orgasmo. <laughs> <laughs> with the fantastic quote, orgasmo. Oh, <laughs> you have no. to say it just like yes. that. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, 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 okay. Let's not get sidetracked here. No, we, no, no, oh, no. Is that, would that be another great hiatus mo- uh, movie? Uh, we both, I think we both know it a little bit too well. But, yeah. oh. <laughs> well, well we've, we've, we'll take some suggestions. How about that? <laughs> hey, let's dive into this episode. So, okay, now the music. Prepare to stop it. 
Yeah, that makes better. We never do the music before no. we do the... No. Okay. So, yes, we open up with a great shot of uh, Scorpius's wife fronts. <laughs> he does have upside-down wife fronts on he his does, head. He does, he does. Uh, both he and Crichton are walking through the, the halls of Moya. They're playing laser quest. They're <laughs> stalking each other. They're trying to zap each other with their little laser packs on. And <laughs> you are fantastic. <laughs> yes, they're playing laser quest. And they're being filmed in a really interesting fashion. It's a chest-mounted camera pointed at, uh, at okay. your face. Oh, nice, yes. I think it was first pioneered by Darren Aronofsky, I think, in Pi. And it's really bizarre to look is, at. Is Pi older than this uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure? a good bit, 1998, uh, I want to oh, say. Oh, okay. Uh, I would have picked it mid or noughties, but, yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell, so yeah. like black and we- white and filmed in 60 millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's really unsettling. And did you immediately get that this was a dream? No, or some not kind of... really, no. Uh, it could have been <sighs> anything, you really, you can go a long ways. I started, like, realizing that it wasn't a dream when there was, like, a server cabinet with a uh, wormhole in it, so, you know, that's kind of when <laughs> yeah. it, like kind of becomes blaringly obviously that Scorpius is in a happy place. Oh, I was lost. This having, is... he, he's having his equivalent of a wet dream. I don't know how, like, half Scarron uh, do that, but this is like... I think like... wet's the only thing that Scarron's and, uh, and Sebastian's have in common. Like, it's, it's yeah. not a hot dream, it's not a cold dream. No, fair point. <laughs> uh, yeah, because when he opens the cabinet... At last! From behind John, grabs John and, 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 I don't know, snaps his neck or something... <laughs> And he goes, ooh, wormhole. Yes, because he finally has the thing that he wants. But no, it's only a dream. He gets, he's woken up by his alarm clock. <laughs> it's <laughs> Raka. Of the, bra- of the brown alarm clock that we all hate. <laughs> he's, uh, he's lying on one of those, those peacekeeper beds. I think we've seen um, Crace on one of these when he was sort of teleported by Maldis. And yes. his body was left behind. And remember how, the, uh, how his underlings were talking about euthanizing him and mm-hmm. Lieutenant Teague of blessed memory protected him from that. Uh, he was also lying on one of these, like, it, it's, it's made out of red rope licorice, sort of. Doesn't yeah, look I mean, particularly comfortable. No. I guess it's like maybe they stretched red rope. Re- uh, red rope licorice. That's a good tongue twister. Between like <laughs> Red leather, yellow leather. Yes. Try that one. Red leather, yellow red leather. Ah, <laughs> well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> like, that can't be hard, but no, it is. Yeah, like... Maybe they just, like, use some of that uh, licorice to uh, stretch it between some uh, tubes for a frame and then, like, make that into a comfortable bed. I Who knows? am dying for some licorice now. We've said it that often. Right. You know how I am. Okay, mm. so he's in, well, probably his bedroom. It's uh, uh, it's huge as a sort of uh, peacekeeper quarters. commander, yes. Yeah. It's got all these sort of uplights in the, in, the, in the side of the bed. It looks very smoky and gothic. And, uh, and Baraka informs it that... They might have managed it. Sorry to wake you, sir, but I think we've finally done it. Now, what could it be? Well, we see Scorpius walking through his palatial boudoir, landing at a porthole where he leans out and looks at an actual wormhole. Mm. So it looks like his uh, wet dream came true, I suppose. He gets his port- uh, porthole. You're trying to create a wormhole! At this point, I was kind of expecting that we'd have the credits, but no, no credits yet. First, we get a scene aboard Moya. It's really weird, sort of structurally, to be cutting back and forth between... I mean, there's an A plot and a B plot, Mm -hmm. and the B plot is not on the ship and doesn't involve any of our characters. No. The B plot is Scorpius and his team. Yeah. I mean, that's not really weird. I mean, is it? No, I mean, I, he, he, I mean, Scorpius has been credited as a mainline actor since the beginning of the season, being in the credits as uh, Wayne Pygram, I mean, has been credited oh, yeah. as a mainline actor. So, and we have seen almost nothing of him other than a few uh, mental... Uh, Harvey, Harvey. Yeah, yeah, Harvey exactly. has a few times. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. But it's, uh, it, it, I thought it was a really, like, bold and interesting choice that, that really sort of expanded the series because they didn't mm. do this before. No, right. I suppose only if there was a direct involvement between those exactly, two uh, situations. Exactly. Uh, mm. So this was really, really fascinating. So we have these two plots. One of them is uh, is Scorpius aboard his, uh, well, aboard what turns out to be his command carrier. That's yeah. his new gamak base. Yes. And one of them is aboard Moya, where John is really wigging out. He's got that sort of twitchy, obsessive uh, yes. uh, behavior that we've, we've seen before kind dialed up. Kind of like he's uh, channeling Stark almost in, oh, in yeah. his behavior. Yeah. He's missing Stark, so he's sort of filling in that role. Yeah, he's very... 
don't know, he's very squirrely. Because he is convinced that uh, they are close, that they can find the wormhole. He saw the Three Stooges and therefore there are like weird little anomalies here that there could be a wormhole close by. I am sick of running to the ends of the fucking just because he's got a belly in I have butt. explained this to you. You have explained it to all of us. Over and over and over. It's been 10 solar it's, days. Yes, and especially Jewel is starting to show a little bit of her, her own science background here and going like, well, yeah, it could also be half a million other things here. Yeah. It's like the, the little, the, the, the student... Uh, <laughs> yes, the, the first year student. Who knows everything about her subject now. Uh, She's got a new outfit. Oh, oh I'm sure she does. Re- really okay, pay. well, you can see her shoulders now. So oh. she used to have like this this weird sort of... Oh, this weird sort of corset. Actually, I'm saying that... How am I describing this now? Oh, no, no, no. That's it. Look, she doesn't have that new outfit yet. She's got her old outfit at the beginning. Oh, I hadn't even noticed. I was just halfway through the episode and got so excited. Oh, yeah, this is where Jewel got the new... But she has a costume change mid-episode. This is so cool. Normally only Zahn gets to do that. (laughs) Oh, no, John occasionally gets a costume change. Oh, yeah, when he gets... Like, I, I mean, forget. last episode when he changes into the space suit, and I think he changes, changes back out of it again as well. Oh, so there's fair a few enough. Those. Yeah, but yes. Nobody wants to continue with this, and that's kind of a thing. Like, he keeps calling to Pilot, Pilot, can we keep going? And, she's, and Pilot says, We can do anything if the others want to, but... Anything is possible. We can do anything, as long as everyone agrees. But he is outvoted. I, I didn't really get the impression who was the last one who was still supporting him, uh, because it was like a... It might have been a 50-50 vote up until that point, with one person supporting him. It but was Dark who was the Dar- last yeah, to walk yeah, out Dar- the room. Dar- yeah, no, very true. Hey, come on, man. Look, it's the Stooges. Huh? Huh? I gotta, I gotta. I look, you know, it's, it's Earth. It's home. I know I'm a little, a little obsessive, but I gotta. John, we have been searching for ten solar days. I mean, come on, enough is enough. You saw that broadcast through a wormhole, and you know as well as I do, your home could be anywhere. And then Pilot reports, oh, well, there's, it's not a big deal, but we're passing through a, an electrical cluster. And yes, an, should electromagnet- be totally fine. an electromagnetic cluster for L, I believe. <laughs> All his scans indicate it's benign, but... But it's not totally fine because he sees something. He sees something that the special effect is kind of cool because it's sort of, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's transparent. Yeah. Sort of in the way that the uh, wormhole uh, serpent was. Right, but- that's what it reminded me of as well, except like it has a bit more of a like a cobra hood or a pilot pilot cap. Interesting. Uh, I, was, I, and- thought it was, I was thinking uh, like manta ray. Right. No, no, or stingray, yeah. you know? No, I, see, I can see that. Like a little bit of that as well, but bit like a jellyfish with much more of a tail to mm-hmm. it. Yeah. No, it, uh, it looks very cool. And uh, it zaps through him. Several times. Yep. And he Back falls and to the ground. Yep. And then he unfalls from the ground. He, he kind of like, I kind of loved how you can see like Ben Browder trying to like do a full on face plant without actually knocking himself into a nosebleed. <laughs> yes, very it's just good. a little, subtle little catch on his hands uh, so he can. <laughs> They're at his side, his, so it's really yeah, yeah. well done. <laughs> but nevertheless, as he levitates, yeah, no big deal. Sometimes people just levitate. Blood starts pouring out of his face and dripping onto the ground. It's, yes, it's, he's got a major nosebleed going there. Are you sure you bled? Yes, I, I bled you. Makes a, like a, it was like a lake of blood. It was oh. biblical. So here's where we need to talk about this plot line goes nowhere. It contributes nothing. I suppose not. Because by the end of it, they still don't understand why he bled and nobody else did. And no. He, and here's why. This is a callback to uh, Ben Browder's original audition, where... Yep, he yeah. walked into the office with, uh, I think, Rockney S. And Bannon, he acted out weird. a nosebleed. He just, like, went, mm, and he impro- did a nosebleed on <laughs> right on cue, on demand. See, that's what I can do. You need me for this role. I'm sure that's what they thought, because he just started bleeding, like, oh. mid, mid-scene. mid He just started doing the scene, and then the blood started pouring out, and he didn't notice that it was, like, dripping off of his chin. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently that, that audition went well. I wasn't too far off the truth then. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> But like that was that was such a like an indelible image that they kept sort of looking for. Okay, how can we how make can we just make him bleed for no reason? And they finally found it. And why we still don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. 
Because we do get a little bit of Stigmata John in the next couple of scenes. Oh, very good. Uh, yeah, because he... it was better than St. John, actually. St. John of the uh, Uncharted <laughs> Territories. Wait, doesn't he... He calls Does... himself that. Yes, Saint John okay, of the... yes. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not losing my mind. There we go. So I'm either St. John of the Uncharted Territories or there's something very, very wrong with me. I'm not losing, I'm not losing time either. <laughs> he wakes up on a stained floor with a blood stains. A big puddle of blood for a nosebleed. Biblical! Yeah, that's quite a lot. Immediately goes running off, finds Chana tries to convince her that, like, something has happened and that he's not well. Chiana is like, yeah, whatever. You've barely eaten or slept in ten solar days. Maybe you'll imagine it. Come and look, come and look, come yeah. and look. And yeah. he arrives to find uh, a DRD scuttling about. Yep. One of the little scuttle buddies. And so he's like, oh, no, it cleaned it up. The DRD cleaned it up. And Chiana's like, no, you're full of it. <laughs> she's She's done with him because she's observed him. He hasn't, like eaten much or slept much in the mm-hmm. last 10 days he's completely wormhole crazy and she's just she's just kind of done she's, with his she's a little bit shit. condescending towards him she's like, like there's still some kindness in her words but she's kind of like yeah, she's done with it she's like she is already the energy rider at this point ah yes of course she is right yeah now if you look at these chiefs does that does that occur to you because she is standing way upright Right, she's not doing her. She's not usual... doing her usual crouch. Yeah, she's standing tall. She, her speech is the same. Her head mannerisms are largely the same. Yeah, but she's already just standing up. So, like, it's like she's standing up to uh, uh, to Crichton. He looks so short in comparison to her now because he's the one who's sort of hunched and uh, and, and and crawling around. Oh uh, yes, it's a very good point. I was I mean, just I'm, captivated I'm when I noticed I'm, that. I'm, I'm kind of like mesmerized by this one, which is like giving you entirely the wrong ep- impression, but. Great audio. This is I know. A, sorry, it's just like one of the chiefs is like a little janky. It's one and, of the. It's it's a little malfunctioning chief. You've got those every now and again. It's our little lucky episode chief. <laughs> There's actually another one that I spotted later on. But yeah, go on. She doesn't take him seriously, and he's he's sort of left to his own devices. Um, Which means he starts taking a DRD apart. Yep, trying to get his blood out of this. this I know DRD. you're keeping it in there. Don't be greedy. <laughs> wow. You know you got my blood in here. But no, he he quickly actually comes to the conclusion that it's not. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay, that's odd. We do see stuff dripping, but it's it's right, just but like that's going on in the background. On, yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't quite quite look like water at this point. It becomes water it's, later, I think. It's, it's weird. I mean, this looks like water dripping onto an already red stain. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's that would be a good way to point it. There's a little bit of yeah, because the, oh. the, the water which is like splashing up is like not clearly not red. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so this episode is called Losing Time. It's one of the things that is happening to the people here because of these these sort of energy parasite creatures that mm-hmm. they don't know who is who. Uh, they don't know what's going on, and apparently it has this effect on John that he bleeds. Yeah. When you look at the floor where he's bleeding, there's a there's a big wet puddle. Mm-hmm. There are also dried blood stains underneath, as okay. if this isn't the first splash of blood that's that come out of him. Kind of makes sense. I mean, in the I same mean, way that here, that red stain may be, it was a blood stain that has dried up, and then the water yeah, started dripping. Yeah, because there's lots of uh, bits and places where people uh, just like yeah, literally lose time. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Ooh, there's layers to this. Yeah. This episode was uh, directed by Catherine Miller, by the way. It's a name that I uh, that I mentioned before. She's only done two other ones. One of them was uh, My Three Crichtons, and it was one of the Liars, Guns, and Money trilogy that, oh, uh, yes. uh, that she did. She brings this wonderful visual energy to it with that that chest camera. Also, like, sort of unsteady cam, like unstabilized handheld right. footage here and there. Yes. Lots of Dutch angles. But all of it is very exhausting for John, who sits down, leaning his uh, his forehead on his arm, and when he wakes up, oh, suddenly there's blood again, and he's still not cut. No. Am I cut? Let me see. Am I cut? No, there's nothing there. You sure? <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, there's a difference between the sh- in, in the shots. The first time you see the, the cut actually running uh, from his hand, but then when he goes and talks to Pilot about this, because uh, uh, I suppose that he thinks that Pilot's going to be more uh, accepting of his uh, situation or at least more willing to listen to what he's saying, Yeah, uh, you can see that it's only on his arm, that he's, he must have washed it off his hand or something. But yes, he's going like, oh, I'm bleeding, and this time I have proof, because there is actually still blood there now. Good, yes, yeah. evidence. Yes, but he's not bleeding from anywhere, and uh, Pilot just still doesn't think it's particularly remarkable. No. There could be another explanation for what's happening. When Carvork duplicated you on the diseased Leviathan, 
Perhaps he... You think maybe Carvac did something to me that, that my body is breaking down? I'm sorry, but it is possible. House meeting, I suppose, again at that point. Yeah, <laughs> John is so frustrated. Okay, he sets down... Here's what he does. He sets down a, a, a DRD, the DRD that he was taking part in. Oh, yeah, which he's carrying rather uh, unceremoniously um, <laughs> yeah. uh, with him along the, uh, the hallway. So he doesn't tell them this, but he's programmed that DRD to record him. Ah, yes. And then tells everybody to, to sit down. He was already expecting that he wasn't the only one that it was that was happening to. That makes sense. Yeah. That is real scientist thinking. He was yeah. setting this up like he wanted to get the, the the rest of the Moya crew to you watch me. I'm sorry. As much fun as that sounds, I don't think so. Which they don't think is particularly They're, entertaining. No, there's a bit of bickering, and they end up just like sitting around in a little circle. Uh, just looking at each other. Are we having fun yet? It's Doggo who at first agrees, and then the other ones that go, well, They okay, kind of get fun. bullied into it, bullied into it. And Doggo goes, does that ah, 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 thing that he loves to do. He does that, like, the, ah, 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 <laughs> I'm going to have some fun editing that together. <laughs> ah, 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 now here, go. Oh, oh, um. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, and we'll all go and watch Crichton. Oh, but what if I have to piss? Well, then, we will all urinate together. You promise? Yeah, I love that. Like, she's, <laughs> she is so coy there. So this actually brings back to a briefly featured segment that we had uh, a while ago. It was like Life on Moya. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And I'm just like, I mean, they're sitting there, like, looking at each other being bored. Yeah. But what the frell else do they do when they're on Moya? It's like... if. Good question. So they can entertain themselves somewhere else, but not in this room together. I mean, they don't have, if they have anything to read. Like you can like get yourself a book and then read yeah. that, or like you know do whatever it is that you normally do to entertain yourself, but now do it here all in the same room. I got two hands. I mean, okay, that might be embarrassing if depending on uh, how intimate those things are. But like, you know, let's let's assume they're not doing yeah. that like twenty hours a day. Um, I mean, Jewel, she's just come from apparently a lovely bath after which she uh, uh, changed into new outfit. Finally, this is where oh, it is. Yes. See, now she doesn't have that big collar around her neck no. anymore because she used to have a, a, a collar, and now she has a much more svelte sort of corset. Uh, it's more like her. some, yeah. It's more like something you'd expect Aaron to wear, almost. Mm -hmm. All that's more richly decorated than Aaron would, uh, you know, the, like the the, the yeah. short sleeves, uh, short sleeve oh, like tops. Oh, crop top, right? Yeah, yeah. The bare midriff. She is a muscular woman, though, Tammy McIntosh. Yeah, but she's also got like these these sort of. Drapes. It's not exactly like a like a gown. No, but it's uh, it's these long. Oh, I don't know what you call it. It's like 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 loin cloth hanging hanging hangers. What do you call those? I have no idea. Of a plate plates. Sure, sure. Yeah. So unimpressed as they are, Chiana stands up, uh, walks over, uh, takes two steps, and slips because there was a bowl that she'd set up to catch some drippings water, which is suddenly full. And she slipped on that puddle of water, and Crichton goes, ha, 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 ha. You have all boy. fallen for my cunning plan. And has uh, DRD Pike, as he names him later, oh, yes. uh, show their image on the clamshell, which all looks great, showing the scene as we've seen it, and then suddenly all four of them just flop down, flop back up again, and start doing well, the hokey-cokey. Uh, yes, it's, it's like almost like uh, Beetlejuice, where everybody's oh, just yeah. got this little... <laughs> <laughs> Shake, 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 shake Sonora, Sonora, shake your body line. Uh, <laughs> Michael's name is Sonora. I tell, tell your friends, friends I adore her. her. And when and she dances, oh brother, she's a hurricane in all kinds of weather. weather. Jump in the line, jump rock your body, body in time. time. Oh okay. yeah, I believe you. Jump in the line, line. rock Take your body, body in time. time. <laughs> now, after this musical interlude. <laughs> You know it so much better than I do. I was impressed with how much I knew. I haven't heard that song in so long. Oh, Harry Belafonte. Dancing with the Grateful Dead. We come back down to... Ooh, ooh. So back on the command carrier, we're in the sort of lab hangar bay. Yes. See this? There's a there's a prowler nose that's painted red with, with cool stripes on it, and there's a window with another... Like, this is huge! It, it looks a bit like one of those launch control things from uh, Battlestar Galactica, you know, just with oh, bigger yes. windows. Yeah, like a launch bay. I mean, that's a good place to pace a prowler. There's a, a, through the windows, we see this office where several people walk in, two aliens that appear to be unrelated, and a peacekeeper that I recognized... His name is Ian Bliss, and he played Bane in the second and third Matrix films. Oh. He was the one that, the human that Agent Smith 
and sort of infiltrated. Right, His yes. own sort of energy rider, kind oh, of. Oh, I suppose that makes sense, yeah. And Ian Bliss, like, is very arrogant towards Scorpius. Oh, right? yes, he's, like, full of it. Can we please get started? You uh, demanded my transfer not uh, to sit around. And Scorpius is a little bit like, eh, I'll let you get away with it this time. Right, son. Yeah, because what he wants, this is uh, director Drillick, Drillick, I think his name is, to start Peacekeeper Trials. Like, automated vehicles have made it into this Yeah, wormhole. back and forth. We've done it six times now. It's time, like, we put, like, a person in the cockpit. Observation Trials. And I was a little bit disappointed by it, because there's, like, a... It must have been a throwaway line. because But Scorpio says, okay deploy him and the way he said it made me think like oh who's him but yeah. it turns out to be just like generic red shirt if, a bit it is also the first non-white peacekeeper that i think we've ever seen that's uh tux akindoyeni uh, i hope i'm pronouncing that right apologies if i'm not unfortunately no speaking lines you briefly see him through the theme through the window nodding up at adrillic before he climbs into right. the uh into the prowler and that's the end uh, of Tux Akindoyeni. I mean, we're not counting Lani Tupu as white, are we? No. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent point. No, that's right. That's right. Lani, uh, Bialar Kreis, and his brother as well. Right, yeah. Yep. So. No, that's true. Clear the hangar area. Stand by for manual prowler launch. So this is probably going to go fine and is hugely successful. Yeah. Actually, should we just follow this this thread for a little bit? Okay, yeah. Because the, sh- the ship comes back after a few more scenes on Moya, which we'll get to in a moment. Yeah. And the, uh, what's his name again? Not Balak? No. Uh, Drillick is, right. uh, is, yes. is the lead scientist. He's kind of smug about it at first. And like, oh, man, we have contact with the Prowler and everything came fine. Yeah, we're not really getting the pilots right now. Auto retrieval and biofluctuations appear normal. Then why is your pilot not responding to our comms? I suspect an antenna burnout. Vessel integrity is definitely intact. Oh, it must be an antenna must, malfunction yeah, because the integrity like is perfect. perfect. Yeah, so he points his uh, car key fob at the prowler, <laughs> presses the button, goes <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> the cockpit opens up and this red goop just kind of oozes out. Yeah. Your pilot's integrity is up. Uh, well, it is definitely not intact. It's, it's good how sort of Prowler cockpits have exactly one dude's worth of volume. Which makes no sense whatsoever. There's a... No. There's no. a lot of space in there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we would be somewhere around the foot pedals. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you sort of got foamed up. I mean, that's popular in, in, in modern oh. like, molecular gastronomy. Maybe we'd have to get Heston Blumenthal in on this one. Yeah. Okay. So it's bad, bad news. And Scorpius is extremely smug about it. Yes. I told you so. Almost. And and Drillic seems to insist. Well, there must be some kind of some kind of problem with the negative shielding. Yeah, that's what, what the f- is negative shielding. Yeah. It won't happen again. And Scorpius says, "Yes, it will. This will never happen again. Oh, it'll happen once more." Instructor Drillic, you're, you're going to be the next flight. Yeah, uh, Scorpius is back to his uh, <laughs> leading through terror. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's the Darth Vader school of management. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, he speaks to uh, uh, one of the aliens who uh, introduces himself as Kokura Strappa. Drillick is project leader. He and what is your name? Strappa. Kokura Strappa. Strappa. Well, Strappa, you are now project leader. Again, like Darth Vader School of Management. Congra- yep. con- congratulations, team leader Kokura Strappa. That's pretty much what he, <laughs> what he does on it. <laughs> yeah, because Strappa says, oh, but he's the, he's the team leader. Yeah, you are now. And now that you know what to expect, you'll know what, you'll be able to study what happens to Drillic and, and gain, some, uh, gain some data from that. Yes. Ooh. Yikes. <laughs> uh, that actor, ooh, I forget his name. He played Traltix before. Oh. The, the makeup team really enjoyed him because he's this, this very lean but very muscular man. So you can put lots of fantastic... That seems to be the favorite uh, kind of actor for anything involving prosthetics because yep. it's so much easier to add things than it is to take them away. So, Yep, yep. They want lean muscle. Look at Doug Jones. Right, yes. He's Prime a example. stick insect who can carry <laughs> 10 times his own weight and... So they, uh, I mean, they sort of made it this 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 sculpt for him. I think it was created by Mario. Ooh, no. it reminds me a little bit of an alien we've seen on uh, Star Trek, the one who uh, 
uh, I think he's in one of the episodes where Wesley goes to the Academy t- uh, test and he has this uh-huh. little he has this little thing in front of his mouth where he where, which oh, exhales memzites. his gas. Is that what it's called? Yes. They're, they're a little bit more tentacly, and this one's got panda eyes instead, but he kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, he's got these really popping eyes. Oh, I like the Ben in, in in Star Trek. <laughs> All of them were played by the same actor because it was very expensive prosthetics to make, and uh, well, well, just put the same prosthetics um, on the, the same one. And then even have a joke later on, like... Oh, you all look like don't take any offense, but you all look very similar. Yes, all of all of our species have the same sort of geotype. How do you tell each other apart? We just do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice hand wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I like his design. So apparently, like they put him in the chair and they made him up and they gave him these contacts, and then they put this little piranha teeth in to, yeah. to make him like extra alien and he was sitting in the chair and they took the bib off and he tried sort of tried his, his face and then he turned around to the makeup team and he gave a little smile with all of his piranha teeth and they fell off their chairs laughing because it was just the <laughs> stupidest most wonderful thing <laughs> and so they kept looking for excuses to get make him to him sort smile. of grin nervously because <laughs> it looks great yes i think that's the plot on the command carrier. I it ends with. I think so. There might. Okay, there's something going on about that the wormhole is in fact destabilizing, and that if they don't do these tests very quickly, then they're going to have to find another one. Implying that That's they it. didn't actually make this, but they found some sort of way to to detect them and to hunt them down. No, it's just pretty advanced science because yeah. I recall that. Ooh, back on Dambada. Let's see. Oh, till the blood runs clear. Oh, that's a long way back. Yeah, the point. mechanic. The mechanic. You remember what she was called? You know what I'm like with names. Name of uh, Furball. Oh God. Fellow. Uh, follows something like that. I can't even know. I've got to. I've got to know. She's played by Magda. Oh, I'm just falling apart at the moment. Furlough. Furlough. Right. How could I forget Furlough? Mm. Oh, she was so great. Anyway, she said that nobody's ever found a naturally occurring wormhole. Right. Yes. Right. What do you know about wormholes? Just that they're theoretically possible, but no one's ever actually found one. They've never found it, or they've like not like come across it. Does coming across one count as finding it, or do you have to be looking for something to be able to find it? I don't know, man. I mean, uh, I can't. I can't hear the sound clip that I just edited in. <laughs> Listen, please. Is there anybody out there who can hear me? <laughs> and it ends with uh, with Scorpius plugging that thing into his brain again. Yes, and having going back to sleep. Yeah, going back to sleep, dreaming of, of playing Laser Quest. Oh, wait, there's one more scene. Yeah. And that's when Braca walks in. Yes. Oh, back to being the favorite one, I suppose. Yeah. The apple of Scorpius's eye after uh, uh, Lieutenant Cobrin briefly held his attention. Until he failed his piloting check. He's squeamish about... He's squeamish any time that he sees Scorpius, like, performing any kind of medical maintenance on himself. Yeah. So he says, oh, yeah, I'll come back because Scorpius is fiddling about with some kind of injector that he's oh, yeah, he's, into he's, his he's neck. He's kind of like, it's almost like he's shooting himself under the chin like several times. Yeah. It's like, is it Botox treatment? I at, don't know. At home Botox? Like, is that it, a thing? It really reminded me of that like trope like when someone's trying, trying to commit suicide and they like take a gun and they point it up under their chin. Oh, gosh. And I, that, that's what it really made me think of when, every, whenever he did that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sp- I assume that's like intentional, that uh, visual imagery. But oh, I never even thought of that. I'm just horrified by it. Either right. either way, so I try not to think about it at all. Fair but, point. So he praises Braca. You know why you're my second in command? No, sir. Because you don't ask questions. But have you ever asked yourself this question? <laughs> because I, f- <laughs> I feel like doing some exposition. <laughs> yeah. And you're a really disappointing foil. So I'm just going to ask you. A question for yeah. you. Think about this now. Question this. It's pretty much, I guess, what he's telling him to do. And it's why do they get so much leeway in pursuit of wormhole weapons? Right. Oh yes, and we learned with like that the reason is that they told the Scarans that they had wormhole weapons, and, and that's they... the only reason that the Scarans haven't attacked yet. Yes. Would it surprise you to learn that the Scarans are planning a massive assault against us, but they haven't because. Because they fear our hidden wormhole weapons. We have no hidden weapons. We lied. And I think the Scarans are beginning to suspect that. High Command reports that they've been massing armies. My latest estimates 
Scott and warriors outnumber peacekeeper soldiers. Ten to one. But if and when they attack, we will lose Bracker. Unless we harness a superior weapon. Yes. So apparently the Scarens outnumber them ten to one, so damn, that's quite a bit. Yeah, we've only seen a few Scarens, but we've yeah. seen that they're like physically, politically, technologically quite advanced. Yeah, so you'd think that like ten to one seems like excessive. Like I mean you you put up a Scarren against a Sebation, I'd say the Scarren wins nine times out of ten. Yeah. So there's one must... Scarron against three Sebations, probably same uh, same result. Yeah, exactly. So you know, even then having a ten times numerical advantage on top of that yep. seems like yeah, they'd be a walkover for them. Uh, so they're in very dire straits, and there's a lot of pressure to get these wormhole weapons that uh, uh, that they supposedly already have. So yeah, uh, like a, 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 a plot line that's completely unconnected from Moya or Talon. And yet, that's fascinating. I love I mean, seeing Scorpius yeah. in his element. It's great to get a little bit more backstory to the Peacekeepers and see how uh, the background politics yes. of the universe develops. I like that. It's yeah. such a fascinating world. Oh, it is. I'm glad you enjoyed it as well. I kind of forgot that it was in there. Oh, I was yeah. so excited when it showed up. You okay? Where are the lights? Pilot. Is he breathing? I don't know. Oh, his monitor, he stinks. What happened to us has happened to Pilot too. Does anybody know how to check his pulse? It's behind the neck and between the vertebrae. Right. Oh, get back! Get back! Get back! <laughs> so, uh, back on Moya, things the plot is thickening, as they say. Because they go back and see Pilot, who has got his own little uh, light show going on there. He's, like, doing his own version of the... <laughs> yes. Uh, with including uh, he jumps flashing in the lights line. and, like, steam from different places. Yeah, just blasting all over the place. And a light coming straight down from above. He's lit very differently. Not quite straight down from above, because there also must be a great uh, lot of light coming from the front. Because, like... Uh, his face would be in darkness it's, if it were coming straight from above. And his oh, face is point. quite well lit. So, I mean, uh, But there's all these harsh shadows like yes. under his eyes. Something that we which don't normally usually feel. see. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the, apparently, the, the, the pilot team had so much fun with Rovu's pilot mm -hmm. and trying to make him distinct that they really enjoyed... Like that challenge again. One of the uh, right. one of the puppeteers yeah. like physically got inside the body and sort of push and move things out. Oh yeah, because he looks so stern. He looks very different. He moves. He holds his head differently. His eyes yes. are squinted. Yes, he's got definitely got uh, very different facial expressions than they've given him so far, including his O face, which. Uh, but well, we'll get. To <laughs> and this is Talip who, uh, if we figure out, you know, if we sort of compress the uh, the expedition that he gives, he is uh, an energy rider. There are species of, uh, they travel in clusters. That's all yes, they say. That the, was he the... comes from the electromagnetic cluster, Frel. Uh, <laughs> and uh, apparently in passing through it, one of the uh, prisoners that they have there escaped. He calls it a diseased energy rider. Yes. There's a lot of layers here, which, how did you feel how well they were developed? Mm. A little bit, right? Yeah. I felt the same way because, like, Talip is a liar. Talip. And this, right. this diseased sort of plot lie, a lie, that's a lie. It's not diseased. It's escaped or yeah. whatever the case. It's, it's complex, but I didn't really feel it so much. No, although later on a bit, I actually wrote down as my notes that we actually have and this might be a more charitable way of looking at it, is that we actually have aliens with alien motivations and alien yes. uh, and, and actions. It's like we don't really know what they are. And, yeah, to me it really felt like they had motivations that were not being made clear or not Whoa. even, like, yeah, exposed or even meant to be exposed. Cause like, I love that. They're, they're operating on a different set of assumptions and uh, that thoughts, is I suppose. Really this must be what it feels like to podcast with me. No, I really, <laughs> I really like that, Kay. Well done. Yeah, they are alien. And it's entirely fine for them to be uh, incomprehensible yeah. and, and mysterious. And, and they certainly are. Because, yeah, he tells them that one of them is infected and uh, he needs to know who it is. But By he tasting, tasting them. them. But he can't really do that either. 
he he tried to do that without them knowing, but then they found out. So now he has to what? Yeah, that's that's all kind of weird because like apparently he can taste, but he doesn't want to. But he does, uh, and they have to figure out for themselves. But he can tell them that the the alien rider will not have. Uh, perfect knowledge about what the other person has that they are uh, that they're taking yes. hold of like they only know superficial thoughts and they won't know any past Personal or details. details yes which is not the case not entirely apparently no this is one of the things that he lies about like, like does yeah. he lie about it or is the energy writer that is chasing like just really good because it's in yeah. chi and right I mean, so, like John and John and uh, Dargo have yes. a little bit of like exchanging personal details, like stuff that they should know about each other, and they each are convinced that the other one is in fact the person that they claim to be. Yep. Lalam was my wife. Uh, Jati was my son. He slept with Chiana, who was my fiance. My dad's name was Jack. My dog's name was Hubble. I lost my virginity to Karen Shaw on the back of a four by. Uh, how old were you? Including John confessing that he lost his virginity to Karen Shaw in the back of a pickup truck when he was 16, and Dargo is, whoa. I was seven. <laughs> Gianna, what's your brother's name? You know what my brother's name was. Just answer the question. Neri. At first, Chiana doesn't seem to... Uh, is she not willing to answer the questions? Or is she... Yeah. Uh, doesn't she know? But then she said, Neri. Yeah, yeah. so she, it comes out with... And that, that's enough to convince them that uh, she is, in fact, Chiana. Have you noticed that Dargo is total dimwit in this episode? He's a real himbo. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Some of his, some of his lines are, like, supportive, but really dumb. Okay, good. Good with the Neri. Yeah, he's very much a background character in this episode, which yeah. is a shame because, like, we're already missing, like, several of the regular cast. So, like, yeah. in, in not making the most use of the ones that you have seems a little bit, uh, yeah, a bit of a waste of opportunity. But I kind of like it. I yeah. kind of like Himbo Dargo. <laughs> like, Anthony Simcoe's certainly having fun with it. The problem is, however, with Jewel, because, like, they go, like, okay, we need to know, confirm whether you are you because of details. And she goes, like, you know nothing about me. None of you know anything personal about me. I could make everything up. I could lie. And they go like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right about that. But no, they know that like... Darko the circum the total himbo. Yeah, know the circumstances of how she got uh, frozen in the capsule. Tell us. And the truth. And again, like, she tells about how that happened and that uh, she got trapped or stuff, something like that. I, it actually escaped me. But Okay, so she found... I discovered an Oasian gem mine. Yes, thank you. That's right. Uh, she found some kind of gem mine, and she got caught, and then she got frozen, and her cousins were waiting for her in a village, and they got sick, and she didn't. And that's why she Right, and then they but got sold to Grun Grunjok or... Grunschlick, very Grunschlick, good. Grunschlick, yes. They sold me to Grunschlick. End of pathetic story. But that's not the story she told them originally. No. I... And she says, well, I lied then, and I'm telling the truth now, and... Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, princess. I think you just selected yourself, most likely. She uh, is handed over to the... Uh, uh, to the Inquisitor board. I mean, they tried to dissuade uh, a, a Talip from, you know, tasting or investigating her. They ask for more time. He won't give it. Mm -hmm. uh, she does the Hokokoki again, uh, <laughs> which is apparently horrifically painful. It's actually Chi. She goes, she goes over and, and, and tries to help first. And John tries to tell her, like, you've got to stay with Jewel. Yes. But she won't. She doesn't want to. Ah, uh -uh, Chiana. Somebody has to stay with Jewel. No, no, no. Not me. Not this time. Because, I mean, like, Jewel's been mean to her. She called her, like, uh, Miss Monochrome earlier, so that was... <laughs> I like that. Yeah, me too. I'm with Miss Monochrome. But it's the energy rider. Yes. The energy rider doesn't want to be near the sort of scene of the uh, whatever. She, don't, she doesn't want the suspicion to fall on her. But... John gets help from an unlikely ally. As he and she are walking down the hallway, he finds uh, DRD Pike again. Yes. Which you can tell because he's got his butt hanging out. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, he's missing the, the butt plate. Yeah. And uh, Pike leads them to the starburst chamber. They use the Star Trek system. He tells him, you know, blink once for yes, twice for no. Yes, we tried. Uh, we tried the what? What is the first system that he was trying to do? This, well, no, the the R two D two stuff doesn't work. Right, you know, he's just beeping, beeping. You understand any of this? No. Yeah, so now let's try Star Trek, and that seems to work. One for yes, two for no. So are they actually talking to Moya or to the DRD? I suppose through the DRD to Moya. Yeah, that's, that's what he's. That, uh, I thought that was the implication. Yeah. Yeah, because pilot. Well. 
Pilots Talon again isn't directly controlling no. the DRDs anymore, so Moya must be. Yeah, because oh, like, Talon... she's done that before. Yeah, yeah, they have got a secret when. Uh, oh yes. uh, the pregnancy was revealed. Yes, the DRDs, the DRDs. So in the uh, starburst chamber, we have like a nice green laser, which I guess back in two thousand one was still a fancy tool to be using. Hey. They're still cool. I know. Lasers but, are like, cool. Look it up. <laughs> no, they are. But, Weirdo. Yeah, so there's a little bit of like a disco room uh, laser flashing going on there. I love this space. It's so it's so different than what we've seen before. It's 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 almost like it's a, a cave of crystals. Yes. Moya pops open a panel. John encourages Chi to push down on it, which seems to be starting a starburst, but that Whoops. gets discontinued. And it like seems to get Chi in the mood to start revealing a little bit about herself because she starts talking differently. She walks up to the central pedestal and starts like yeah, acting more like a energy rider, I suppose. Well, I mean, she's perfectly Chi. She just sees John looking above her head because thanks to this discharge of energy, mm-hmm. he can see the energy rider right. floating above her and puppeteering her, and that's mm. when she gets this uh, this change. Yes. You yeah. no. no. No what? You saw. Saw. Saw my. Yeah, Gigi Edgley did a did an incredible job here. She, yeah, uh, bang up job that. Right. She says she workshopped a few different versions of this uh, of this rider. Apparently, she made this choice for a weird pronunciation. Yes. That me and body are pronounced may and body and yeah. all these. Oh, it's fantastic. Mm, so good. Feels good. Gee, what the hell are you doing? Taste. Taste. Oh. <laughs> Love to try this body. Okay, whatever you are, you can get the hell this off of me. Body. Once you. Uh, they almost get a little bit intimate there. Yeah. Yes. Nice little moment between those two. She claims that uh, her body is attracted yeah. to him. Um, yes. Which, Oof. well, we don't know whether she's lying or not, or whether the might the, the well be. I mean, is. he's a handsome man. I think she's. Well, she's yeah. She's frilled most of the males so far. Dargo. Yeah, yeah, she's got a good track record. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier on, there was a line where John was sort of being petty, and she, she said, hey, don't be a trowk. Don't be a trowk. Which doesn't make any sense, because trowk is, uh, like we've understood it, like a, a, a sexually liberated person or a slut, for right. example. Right, yes. Like, so, <laughs> so don't be a trowk means like... So don't be a slut is a fantastic way to <laughs> shut someone up. <laughs> Maybe it's like just like the... Uh, Farscape equivalent of telling someone not to be horny on Maine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tough for John because apparently either like either Nabari or energy riders can do this thing where they sort of dance like an Egyptian and then touch your chest and you just nut, which is apparently what's, well, what's happening. It, yeah. Love this tight body. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, we all love this body. Okay. So that's also the tasting, I got the impression. At least that's... Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Because she says that uh, that Talib taste, but yes, I sip. Exactly. And sipping is nicer. Yeah. <laughs> She, because like, a lady I mean, he, sips her... No, I'm not putting that one again. He no, no, no. really likes the sipping. Like, yep. keep, keep it up. He sort of staggers mm-hmm. off now. I like, mean, getting sipped twice while you're still wearing leather pants is not a terribly hygienic way to go about your day. It does have a bit of a weird limp there. I mean, that <laughs> might explain a few things. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sip later. I'll call you. Uh, you're in the book, right? We don't. Oh, we only get to see him from behind, so there's no knowing if he's got a stebbing going or anything like that. <laughs> St- Okay, you're going to have to tell the podcast listeners at home what stebbing is and okay. where that's from. Stebbing is from the meaning of lift, which is written by Douglas Adams and I forget whom with. But yes, it's a book where they basically had a party game where they sat around, they took a random name from the English countryside, weird little village names that you find on English maps, maps of England, I mean, and then they had to make up a library definition of them. So for stebbing, it was the erection that you have, which you cannot hide because you're not wearing a jacket or a sweater long enough to cover. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so John and his stabbing wander off. He finds Pike again, investigates, and I thought this was cool. He asks Moya what she wants to do. Yes. Because he's told Chi in the energy rider to stay there. We're going to figure something out because now he's not sure who to trust. So he asks Moya, what do you want to do? Mm. All right, we got to talk. You let me in the starburst chamber to find that thing in Chiana, didn't you? Yes. Does Moya want me to reveal it to Talop? And what if Talop is lying? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down. Calm down. I know you're freaking out about Pilot, but if that thing in Chiana is not diseased, does Moya still want me to betray it? And Moya goes like, yep, please yep, do. do it. Go it. And he takes her lead. Yep. I mean, he ultimately, not, Moya. Com- I mean, not completely, but like, this yeah. is... And then he runs off to his uh, his friends and it tells them uh, uh, what he found out. Yep. And they go back to Pilot. But they have, uh, they have an ace up their sleeve because they've left Chiana where the pilot can't see. No, yes. Apparently the, the apparently chamber. the Starburst chamber, there's no sensors there. It's and, like the uh, inside of your skull. Like you don't have, yeah. right? You yeah. don't have like, like uh, sensory nerves inside your brain. No, which is where you can do those weird brain surgery on people who are actually conscious and... Okay, you're bringing a lot of troubling imagery into this episode, dude. We've got to, you've got to, like, first it was with, a, like, placing the gun under your chin, and now we're, do, now we're talking brain surgery. Oh, Ooh. yeah, sorry. Um, it's not even, a, like, it's, it's not even like eyes are being pulled out in this episode or anything. <laughs> it's all... We've hidden the rider, and you will never find it. So let's make a deal. You turn the ship around, head back to your cluster, we'll tell you where the rider is, and you two can play pick the friendly alien in your neighborhood. How do I know one of you is not infected? That this is not the rider's plan? (laughs) It's not, believe me. This plan is so bad, it has to be ours. Okay, I choose. The, the energy rider decides to like have a sip of Dargo, uh, throws John across the room. He's not responding to their negotiation. He uh, no. uh, just exerts his uh, his power over them. And Jewel, yeah, Jewel has uh, uh, snuck downstairs. She's figured out where Chiana would be hidden because she was heavily traumatized by the tasting, and she will not be subjected to it again. No, once so. more, no. What's going on? What's going on? Get up! Why the pearls pistol, princess? Crichton told us. You're the one. Now get up! Okay, I'm the one. Get out! I'm the one. At gunpoint, she takes Chiana with her. Up to the hallway, they find John. John goes, hey, hey, guys, we're fighting. Bickering. <laughs> this isn't us. Joel! What are you doing? I'm taking her to pilot. Look, that demon's got Dargo. Get out of my oh, way! Hey, hey! <laughs> There's no need to help. No more talk. And the energy rider grabs both of them by the throat, lifts them both up. She doesn't want to go. No. Uh, the plot continues to thicken and, and, and grow more and more disastrous. But more harsh lighting of pilot. Yes, because Talip has detected what's, uh, what's happened and apparently has remotely just killed the energy rider in Chiana. Yeah, that was a bit weird, but... I didn't fully get it because no. it looked like the sort of manta creature I... exited Chiana and entered yeah. Pilot's body. There was something of a... Like, I kind of lost the plot at that point. I'm sure someone's worked it out, but even in the... Oh, yes, she's even floating at this point. Yeah. Hey, she's floating. So yeah, then... she gets a floaty scene as well. Yeah, then More why was John work. floating? Oh, that must have been Talip. Yeah. Talip made John float. Okay, cool. Huh, there's a lot going on in this episode. Yeah. It might be a little more complicated than that. Dargo's on the floor. Chiana's on the floor. Jewel helps her up. Yeah. I liked that. Like, she's, she's continually, like, evolved in the, in the last few episodes. Like, now she's, she's a woman of action, just grabbing the gun and trying to resolve the situation. And, 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 and when Chiana is, is unconscious, like, she, it's not just providing medical attention. It's just holding her, mm. right, with, with genuine concern. I kind of like that. Is she okay? Yeah. Uh, speaking of liking, they, they now approach Talop in, uh, in Pilot, 
I say, well, you've got what you want. Time yeah. to time to Leave. go. And he goes, like, no, I like it here. <laughs> yes. The diseased rider was right. It's excellent. Now go away. Go away. So I can... I'm just going to keep, like, keep enjoying it here. So plans have to be made. I thought you couldn't stay in pilot. Never knew it could be like this. So good. <laughs> the rider was right. It is perfect to stay too long. Perfect. Moya will never accept you. Moya will do what I command. Now go. Take the Luxon with you. Oh, so I can enjoy this. <sighs> I uh, love this. Like, it's. I sort of felt like, oh, how would you describe Pilot in this mo- or, or or Talip in this moment? Like, he's just really sort of reveling in it. Like, he's just lighting some incense and pouring himself a glass of wine. And, ooh, I'm just really going to enjoy myself tonight. Okay, so have you seen Out Cold? Out Cold? No, I haven't. Uh, in that case, never mind. So there's a scene where a guy is sitting there and he's like, he's preparing to get himself... Uh, Ready for a fun evening on the internet, and he's like, he's like, oh, like yeah, sitting nice. down and like having his glass of wine and getting himself all comfortable. And it kind of reminded me of that. <laughs> Apologies for any bangs that you might be hearing in the background. We are recording this on New Year's Eve, and which where it's traditional to set off fireworks here in the Netherlands all of during the day, despite yep. the fact that it's, you're not supposed it's to not do that this year. It's not currently legal yeah. <laughs> this year, but yet nevertheless, oh gosh, there's still the odd bang going up. Speaking of, well, big bang, I suppose. <laughs> there's a scene which it's, I which welcome to Farscape. The odd bang will occur (laughs) well yes so in the next shot i actually thought that we were looking at a star field but no it turns out the reflective floor of the uh the starburst chamber which is like we see a little drd scuttering about yeah it's pike once again yeah little scuttle botting about oh like jules actually sort of cradling chiana but she's sent off with dargo on a secret mission to the neural cluster where mm. Dargo sort of like immediately silences her and then shows her a piece of uh, the, the, like one of those Rorschach tests. And it was like, is this a map of Moya? I think it's a, a sort of schematic right. of some rewiring that they're doing. Oh, okay. Because I was like, oh, wow, is this a Moya floor plan or something like that? And I was kind of like, oh, no the fanboys are going to... No, that's why I was wondering nope. about it. Like this... no, no, I don't think there's an official scale for Moya. There's mm-hmm. not an official number of floors because they also change. Like she rearranges right. herself. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of those fanboys that would love it, but I know that's like it kind of seems like the, the kind of th- way. it seems like the kind of thing that they would take a, st- a still frame off and then work it out what it is. And uh, yeah, no, you never get treated. It's like in Star Trek and Star Wars, like you have all these like books full of cutaways and and, mm-hmm. and floor plans and blueprints. And for Star Trek, yeah, that was my jam when I was a kid. Or even on the Mandalorian, when they like have this, uh, the, the, you have this view of the one of the instruments in uh, on board the Razorback. Uh, and there's like there's the Razor a, Crest, thank sorry, you. Sorry, Razor Crest, mm-hmm. my bad. And there's like a whole YouTube video about someone trying to figure out what that map may be and trying to overlay it over <laughs> known existing Star Wars maps and just <laughs> trying to basically get into John Favreau's uh, mind about like what was he awesome. trying to do? what's he trying to show here what what could this be like where in, in which sector are we? <laughs> like, oh, that's so great. Uh, Never it. happens in Farscape. No, that's not this kind of show. Like so. Yes, John carries Chana back towards the Starburst chamber. Because he's got a plan. I got a new plan. This plan is so bad. It's a better plan. It has to be ours. Unified plan, as always. So they need to do three things. Distract Talip. That's yep. going to be that's going to be his job, so that he can start a Starburst from Pilot's console. Right. And he knows how to do that. Which I don't understand, because like they, they know how to do it now from inside the Starburst chamber, but or maybe that's, I guess, unhealthy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, I know. This is... Yeah. On the Snurcher's Guide, there were also questions about this. <laughs> What's a Snurcher? A snurching is the is the verb for thieving. Oh, oh yes, of course. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. talked about this, yeah. And the Snurcher's Guide is, a, is an excellent website with lots of resources. Oh, okay. I'll, check and I'll stay away from that. Yeah, yeah yes. That's... All of them. It's still <laughs> not safe, okay? So... Chiana and 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 Pike are in the Starburst chamber, and they have to uh, initiate it by like touching these two wires together. Meanwhile, yeah, jump uh, start, jump starting Moya. <laughs> Jewel and and Dargo are rewiring in the neural cluster so that the energy will be uh, driven up into Pilot's chamber. And John goes to Pilot to taunt him. What are you doing here? Oh, relax, Casper. I'm not here to interrupt your blissing. Too much makes you go blind, though, you know. Specifically, like to to worry him, mm. 
right? Because okay, you're you're detecting that like lots of things are going wrong, right? Like, can you can you give me a, a read on the the sort of internal circulation or whatever? Stay away! It's your pilot. I think this body is uh, monitors internal uh, circulation rate. Circulation rate. I I can't find the circulation rate. What? Uh, uh, oh, perfect. What? And Talib goes, oh, I'm not detecting anything at all. Basically oh. trying to confuse him. Because earlier on, he says that like he can't really control Moya very well through Talon's body. Although he, he then later says that, like, oh, now I figured it all out. And so it's, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit weird. He's a bit wishy-washy like that, I suppose. Yeah, I think there's something about how the sort of energy riders are very complex beings. Yeah. And the... I mean, uh, isn't. Well, that that most like living beings can't really tolerate their their right. Presence. That's what it says. Like he could he could take over t- uh, pilot, pilot because pilot is apparently complicated enough. But because John suggests that earlier on, it's like oh well, why, why don't you just possess each and one of us in turn and then uh, figure out who it was? But he can't do that because most of them wouldn't survive the experience. And he has a rule that uh, the first law is never to harm the host. Yeah. But Talib Any, is yeah. a killer, according to the. It, it gets, but anybody else is fine, you know. Just don't, just not the host. You can kill other people, just, just not the host. Yeah. So with the energy rider suitably distracted, John can reach across, hit the button, calm down Tiana, who has unfortunately passed out. And, oh yes. Uh, DRD Pike has to run over and and wake her up so she can do. Uh, bitty, 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 bitty. Yep, uh, she can jumpstart Moya. Pike goes back to jumpstart Moya as well, and unfortunately, he doesn't make it to the exit in oh. time. Now, Moya! He has become one with Moya. Or hey, I'm actually genuinely sad about little D.O.D. Pike. Pike. Pike so, yeah. so was Ben Browder. Like he, he, in, in an interview, he talked <laughs> about, like, it's, it's kind of weird, but when he had this death scene, we were all sort of standing around like, oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, humans and their need to anthropomorphize things. Basically, it's beautiful, though. I yes. love seeing the, 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 the sort of starburst phoenix, energy. And we see the almost phoenix-like oh, energy riding. Uh, this energy rider is red. Yes. So Talip must be red. That means that... Also, it looks much more like a bird rather than a jellyfish or whatever it was. I see that we what saw. you mean. Yeah. Interesting pattern of wing flapping. Almost yeah. like it's reversed from a, a, a regular bird or oh, yeah. a bat. It's like one of those things that you can't really tell which way it's turning around, and this one you can't really tell which way it's flying. Well, it doesn't fly for, for well, very long because no. the uh, uh, the starburst energy zaps up through pilot's den and electrocutes the energy rider. Solved. Problems yep. solved. Just in time for the end of the episode. <laughs> Everybody sort of hangs out a little bit groggy. They're all, uh, they're all ready for bed. Even John. Yeah. Well, yes. I need some sleep. Even John, he just wants to sleep, and they're just waiting for Dargo to return. He's uh, undoing the changes that they made mm-hmm. in the neural cluster, and he tells Chi, "Oh, he's still down in the neural cluster." And Chi says, "No, no, he's not down there. He's here. No, he's down in the cluster." And he walks in the door. Yeah. Like, huh. Huh. Weird. Another plot hole, probably. Like, it's weird that she knows something that she couldn't possibly know. Those writers, they just don't know what they're yeah, doing, do no, they? Yeah, no, they don't, really. No. So how many points? Oof. I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, I saw wouldn't you know, writing. I wouldn't know where to go with that. Really? Okay. Well, that's probably the note that I can't read anymore. <laughs> That curse. Yes. Because I have a final note on the mic. Uh, notes let, me, I, let me give it a shot. I, I, I can't see what it's like. It's the one between, between, between the brackets. Large, brackets, yes. That's what I was looking for. V- 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 I know, So right? that's a V. Yeah, it v- could, o- be an, could be an R, though. It could be an R. Ross, Ross Enchanted? Furball. Chair, chair, chair. Uh, no, it's one word. Fellow. Gosh, that's a long word. Uh, follows. Something like that. I don't know. I like. Squeak I, squeak I can't read it. I should have been a doctor. <laughs> Follow. Right. Oh, it's a shame that we already resolved this sort of Scorpius plotline. Because well, it, we kind it's, of. It was I mean, lovely. Okay, there's a little flashback to that here at this point because right at the end we see another like little bit of wormhole stuff going on, and we go back to John and the Scorpius playing uh, laser, tag laser tag. Yes. With with Scorpius winning and grabbing John uh, and looking at the server cabinet and the wormhole. 
And then John turns the tables on him. Yeah, just grabs Scorpius from behind, strangles him, throws him into the uh, into the wormhole, and like Scorpius wakes up with a startle in his bed, sitting bolt upright. So I'm just like wondering, like, was this like a shared dream? Was it, again just it's probably just again Scorpius dreaming, but like yeah. his, his good dream about finding the wormhole turned into a bad dream about finding the wormhole. So oh, might, like it's a stress dream. I think so. You know, because his experiments yeah. aren't going very well. Now no, that his first exactly. Test pilot. I, 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 that's, that's how I, that's how I choose to interpret it. Nice. She gives me a woody. She gives you the willies. Willies and woodies. I think my woody goes to Jules' development in this episode. Yes! 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 The new outfit, right? Well, no, just her and I know her you didn't notice the outfit. I'm her broken, character okay. development in general is what That's I was like cool co- talking about. That's uh, that she's becoming even more a part of the crew. She's like being doing useful things. She's uh, she's not the the silly little spoiled brat anymore that she was in the beginning. Yeah. She gets my uh, woody. She's earning people's respect. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have to change. She no. She doesn't be herself. Oh, I like that outfit. Uh, okay, Woody's. Oh, uh, sorry, Willie's. Why do I keep mixing those things up? You'd think I know about that by now. Yeah. Um, I, definitely <laughs> Pilot's O-Face. <laughs> <laughs> and appropriately, fireworks were detonated just to emphasize the O-Face. Yeah. He pulls that face a lot this episode. Yes, he does. He Whoa. does. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean it's 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 obviously horrifying to hear him to hear him screaming, 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 screaming. Hey, uh, uh, Lani Tupu was doing much more his own normal voice for the Energy Rider. Do you notice oh, that? No. We live in clusters. When you pass through ours, a disease rider escaped on your ship. So bold acting choices. Yeah. Uh, my Willie, I guess, goes to honestly the Energy Rider plot. Okay, just plot like because it's kind of weak. Oh. I don't. I don't want to say that because you know I love everything and, mm-hmm. and I really did enjoy it. But it's a bit of a retread of a bug's life, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I see what you mean. Which is okay for Star Trek to do, but hey, Farscape, we set a higher standard here for originality, mm. and I guess it felt very Star Trekky as well. I just it, maybe I just didn't follow it right. But let's just uh, let's just keep it at that. Um, and my Woody unconventional move is the plot hole of John's bleeding. That right. just, it's... Completely it's, unresolved. <laughs> yeah, I kind of love that. Hey, Doc, how come I bled and you guys did? Well, that's obvious. You bled because you're an irritating and inferior species. Good night. Okay, yeah. Right, why, did, why is that in the episode? Because. Because it's cool. Because, yeah, okay, Because yeah. he spouted a nosebleed right during his audition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. I mean, it might, might might just be an effect of when he gets tasted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, there was a bit where he was worried that maybe it meant that he wasn't a perfect... You think maybe Carvac did something to me that, that my body is breaking down? I'm sorry, but it is possible. Yeah, oh, the right, yes, but we, we kind of didn't touch on that one. Yeah. Down. No, he has a lot to be anxious about that. And I noticed uh, that Sean was quite dismissive about that because, I don't know, it may, might, might, might have made her worry that she was not the original oh, either. Oh, good point, she was... All- yeah, she was like, oh, don't be such a stick in the mud over that. Wait, but she's the energy rider already at this. And see what yeah. I mean? This is why I get my will. <laughs> <laughs> fair point, fair point. And that's the story so far, Scape. Yeah. Join us next week where, if you like pina coladas and getting caught in the swamp, <laughs> Rigel really opens up to a woman despite her apparent drug problem and trail of broken-hearted mercenaries, while the rest of the crew work through trust issues during a high-stakes game of hide-and-seek. That's Season 3, Episode 10, Relativity. Ooh. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. It's going to be, like, relative. Yes, Alex Trebek. <laughs> Okay. Who's Alex Trebek? <laughs> We're not doing great with these references. No, we? no, not. no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. We're at Farscape on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you again to our friend Lee. That's Lee Writes Songs uh, for the season three theme song to uh, to So Farscape. If you want to send us your synopses, you can do so at sofarscape.com slash submit. And please send them. I need a lot of synopses for the middle of season three. It's We're heading into the into, into sort of synopsis draft out here and otherwise i'm gonna to have to come up with something we're heading read. into the uncharted territories of synopsises and i'm not that funny you can also send us fanfic recommendations at soulfarscape.com slash fanfic and if you want to help keep the lights on you can uh, chip in on our patreon that's soulfarscape.com slash support you know what i'm tired of saying all of this you know what i'm going to do gonna, before this episode yeah. is uh, soulfarscape.com slash links 
hey, I'm hey, just going to figure out how one. that works. Yeah. I'm going to put all the links I, there. Maybe make a website. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, well, maybe not. I don't have to go that far. Just make so far as it comes to slash links. Oh, we can I have, bet we, it's going to work. We, we can have like one of those uh, web, web, web rings. Web things. rings. <gasps> <gasps> oh my God, those still exist. I'm sure they do. No, Farscape web, websites, they're, they're, there's got to be still <laughs> a Farscape web ring. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. So, so Farscape's so, so good. good. <laughs>